Good morning again. Uh, the Security Council was just briefed by Director General Grossi from the IAEA and from Under Secretary General De Carlo from the UN about Russia's reckless attack on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant last night. And that meeting was at the request of the UK and our partners. We had quite a wide-ranging conversation, but I would perhaps pick out uh, five things. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, uh, that Director General Grossi was able to tell us that Zaporizhia is safe at present. Uh, the Ukrainian uh, authorities and their experts have some access and been able to report to the regulators. But this is clearly uh, a very serious uh, attack. The second thing we heard was, I think, very strong condemnation of Russia's reckless conduct and attack. This is the first time that a fueled and functioning nuclear power plant has been attacked. And in doing so, Russia has breached international law and breached uh, the Geneva Conventions. And there was very clear concern around the Security Council about that. The third thing I think we heard was grave alarm at the implications of this attack. This was a near miss, but no one was under any illusions about the gravity of the implications. Uh, there were many citations of the risk uh, that the Chernobyl attack had, uh, the Chernobyl meltdown had created, and looking ahead to the generations uh, of Ukrainians, of citizens across Europe and around the world who could suffer if a nuclear attack took place. The fourth thing we heard was clear and continued condemnation of President Putin's war of choice. Uh, there were clear calls for uh, peace and security, uh, for the withdrawal of Russian tanks and troops, clear calls to end the war and to find uh, dialogue. The people of Ukraine, and indeed the people of Russia, deserve peace. Uh, and the final thing I want to say is that the UK remains absolutely determined in our support for Ukraine. Uh, Prime Minister Johnson spoke to President Zelensky this morning in the very early hours, and the Foreign Secretary is doing a series of meetings in uh, Europe today with the G7, with NATO, and with the European Foreign Affairs Council. Uh, and the UK has pledged over $200 million to humanitarian assistance and to economic support for Ukraine. Thank you. Madam Ambassador, what, uh, what do you expect next? Are you, which steps you want uh, to be in taking on the ground to uh, de-escalate the situation and to make sure that uh, the attacks we saw are not going to happen again and to uh, guarantee the safety of uh, these um, areas. Thank you. So what we want more than anything is for Russia to stop its illegal invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and in pursuit of that, obviously, the Security Council has been meeting and you saw the vote in the General Assembly earlier with 141 clear uh, condemnations of Russia's aggression. Uh, in addition, the UK is supporting Ukraine by providing defensive military equipment by providing economic and humanitarian aid, but we've also announced uh, a package of sanctions against Russia, against Russian finances and banks, against Russian exports, and against Russian ships in order to squeeze the Russian military machine. Madam Ambassador, the, the Ukraine keep asking uh, NATO and Europe for the no-flight zone. Today, NATO state today is not going to do it. What is exactly the UK government position on that? Yeah, and you'll have seen the debate and the statement uh, in NATO. The question around a, a no-fly zone is that it has to be guaranteed. And in order to guarantee it, uh, NATO would have to put troops in the air, and that would or could bring them into direct conflict with Russian uh, troops. So it would be uh, a very high risk of escalating the conflict. And what we want to see is the de-escalation of the conflict and for Russian troops to go home and Putin to end the war. Thank you. Ambassador, on the resolution, sorry. Next week.